Sit. Stay. Good dog. An all-new AFE Animal Edition starts right now. With football tryouts only a week away, Tommy was in serious training. Look at that speed and determination. He knew the coaches would be impressed with how fast he was. But he also wanted to show them he could take a hit. Welcome to America's Funniest Home Videos, Animal Edition. And now, the busiest worker be in television. At least that's the latest buzz. Alfonso Ribeiro. Hello there. I am so excited you've joined us for another episode of AFV Animal Edition. I hope you have your snacks laid out, a tasty beverage to wash them all down, your favorite pets next to you on the sofa, and make sure you have a towel handy just in case you and your pet laugh out loud with food in your mouth. <laughs> this show can sometimes get messy. These two are inseparable. In the summer, they spend all their time at the lake. Got it. In the winter, they play in the snow from morning until night. And if one of them gets stuck, the other is right there to help. Ah. But sometimes, they both need help. Oh. Help me. You like to think most animals get along in perfect harmony. But you know, they don't. Rather than get bullied again, the turtle sort of decides to just toss himself in. <laughs> in the U.S. Golf Association's Rules of Golf, rule number nine is referred to as ball played as it lies. No of course, in this particular situation, I think we can make an exception. No way. <laughs> The puppies just weren't fans of the big baggy shorts look. They preferred the shorter shorts of the Magic Johnson and Larry Bird era. And the puppies win. The puppies win the argument. We got a very friendly squirrel at our house here. He's, I feel like he would just jump right on me right now. He wants the kids to feed him. He is. He's a cutie pie, and a little scary that he's this okay. I mean, we're like, we're like two. Oh. Well, what were you predicting would happen? You did call him a cutie pie. I don't know why the park rangers even bother tracking her. They know where she will always be, raiding Mrs. Gunderson's bird feeder. They should really make them stronger. Okay. Her relationship with the ducks was, how should we say, uh, complicated. They have issues with each other. They're working it out. Oops, here it comes. It's gonna be a big one. Ready? Gesundheit. I am a sucker for those cooking competition shows, which is why I am so excited about this new show I have heard so much about. I think Gordon Ramsay and Bobby Flay should be nervous because fans are gonna flock to Cooking with Boo. All right, Boone, will you help me make a sandwich? Give me the ham. Ham sandwiches were Boone's specialty. So take note, you'll be wanting to make one of these for yourself. Good boy, right here. Thank you. Will you give me some cheese? Ham's perfect companion. It may be hard to hold on to, but it will be so well worth it. Hold on to it, here. No, it's not for you, not for you, here. What else? Will you give me the mustard? So far, it's pretty standard fare. Ham, cheese, mustard. <laughs> Boy, good. Now, and maybe some ketchup, too. There you ketchup. go. Ketchup is the wild card ingredient. Boone is not afraid oh. to take chances. That <laughs> might be a beer. Beer to finish it off. That'll work. Good boy. Good boy. Now shut the door. Shut it. Oh, grab me that one, too. OK, grab me that one. One for shut each the of them. Shut the door. Good boy. Watch Good. for Cooking with Boone coming soon. Big pieces. It will change how you think about the sandwich. 
Got all the fixings. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side? Nope. He crossed the road because he saw you were headed that way and he thought, wonder where they're going. That's the thing about animals. Some of them just like to come along for the ride. Okay, well, this bird just landed on my hood in the light. I don't know what we're going to do when the light changes. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to take that bird where he wants to go because you now work for Fluber. <laughs> <laughs> we have Uber. Birds have Fluber. Oh my God! Fluber, the rideshare app for birds that are just too lazy to fly. <laughs> Thanks for using Fluber. Hey, there's a snake on the hood of that car. I wonder if the girls inside have even noticed it. <laughs> okay, they have. While Karen went in for a bite, Bruiser kept his eye on the rig. Since we have given every driver a canine co-pilot, there hasn't been a single break-in. Not a single one. That's a big 10-4, good buddy. Sure, the other kids made more money with their paper routes, but Benny still preferred his chicken route. <laughs> Once again, here at Fluber, we make sure every bird gets where they're going in a timely manner. But when we get there, you gotta get off the car. There you go. Thanks for using Fluber. I don't know what these guys said to that donkey, but he did not care for it. Here, donkey. Jeremy, go paint it. It's raining cats and dogs. No offense. If you think finding a bear in your truck is terrifying, wait till you see the horror that awaits this guy. Get out. Also, thanks for using Fluber. The difference between a cat's personality and a dog's can be explained with this analogy. If you were in jail one night, the dog is who you would call to bail you out. The cat would not bail you out because odds are the cat is sitting in jail next to you and you are both there because of something the cat talked you into doing. Some cats are flat out felons. Now what's happened is we've had a neighbor contact us because they're missing their gloves. Better hope they don't press charges. Missing gloves, huh? The neighbor's gonna have to be more specific. Phoenix has a whole collection of stolen gloves. And someone's reading glasses. And someone's reading glasses. So I'm not kidding when I said the cat has brought home a laundry basket full of stuff. Wow, Phoenix, you've been busy. But not as busy as you'll be going door to door to give it all back. Phoenix. Hello. I know. I know, but you're gonna have to. Another feline felon brought to justice. Some cats just have crime in their blood. Look, up in the air, or over there in the woods, or maybe it's under the house, or in the attic. Almost anywhere can be the setting of a close encounter of the animal kind. Hear something? There it is. Got it. Okay, fun trip, everyone. What do you say we pedal back to shore now? The reward for pedaling up the hill is coasting all the way down. Just make sure to watch your speed. You never know when an unexpected encounter may occur. The deer was fun. But the cyclist will have this playing in his head for some time to come. He was approaching the car so calmly. But then, time to go. One of the biggest decisions a sports team has to make is what their mascot and name should be. I always recommend an animal, and the more unique, the better. A minor league baseball team in Amarillo, Texas, did just that, and with major success when they chose a prairie dog as their mascot. But do you know what they go by? Are they the Amarillo A Prairie Pound Puppies, 
B, sod poodles, C, barking squirrels, or D, the panhandled possums? Think you know the answer? Well, I'll tell you in our mascot moment when AFE Animal Edition continues. The minor league baseball team in Amarillo, Texas is known as the Sod Poodles. What exactly is a Sod Poodle, you might ask? Well, you're looking at one. Oh yeah, nice catch. But these Sod Poodles are actually named after these Sod Poodles. And the one thing they have in common is they are both awesome and incredibly tough and cute. Can't deny that. And the toughest, cutest prairie dog of all the coteries on the planet, a coterie is what you call a group of prairie dogs, by the way, is Ruckus. Ruckus the Sod Poodle lives in Hodgetown Stadium. He loves kids, loves his fans, loves his dear old dad, Prairie Doug, and most of all, he loves baseball and the baseball way of life. In 2019, over a thousand Amarillo area elementary school students participated in a vote to name the new team's mascot. And I have to say, I think they chose the perfect name. Just look at this guy. What are you doing? It's on fire. You're smoking the He's a total ruckus. And this rootin' tootin' sod poodle has got moves. Both on the field and off. Uh, seriously, Ruckus, the rest of the team is waiting to use that locker room. So the next time you find yourself in the Texas Panhandle, you should swing by Hodgetown Stadium and cheer the sod poodles on to victory. A seven inning, no hitter. Ruckus will be keeping an eye out for you. Go sod poodles. We are going to watch a ton of videos together. And as we do, make note of which one is your favorite because at the end of the show, we are going to award $1,000 to the clip we enjoyed the most. So let's see if we match. Okay, now, the greatest piece of advice I have ever received was when I was 11 years old. Totally changed my life. <laughs> All right, uh, listen, I, I want to share it with you in hopes that it will do the same for you. The true meaning of life is... <laughs> I guess I'll have to come back to that because it looks like it's time for another edition of What's That Dog Barking At Now? Oh, he loves barking at them. But he has never actually come face to face with such a fearless one. Frankly, he isn't sure what to do next. And the squirrel is sort of digging it. Security cameras being everywhere have taken so much of the mystery out of life. In the old days, you would find an incredible mess in your yard, look around and wonder, how the heck did this happen? Now, you just hit rewind on your phone and the mystery is solved. Between you and me, usually an animal did it. So tonight, we are counting down the top 10 times you were glad that security camera was there. Let's kick it off with the bottom five. Number 10. He thought the five-mile walk they just took would have tired Roy out. But Roy seemed to have boundless energy. Maybe tomorrow, a 10-mile walk. Number nine. And they thought a well-meaning ghost was taking the cans to the curb every week. Now, if he would just bring them back in after. Number eight. Some things scare even the toughest of guys. He's got to go. Number seven. So that is the reason the tap water has been tasting gamey lately. Number six. It seemed like a perfectly good shortcut back to the woods, the mama bear thought. She didn't see the beware of dog sign. And she certainly didn't see the beware of Haley sign. 
Shoving a bear is not something I would ever recommend doing. But I have to add, way to go, Haley. We will continue our countdown of the top 10 times you were glad that security camera was there a little later in the show. Even in the most loving of families, there is a pecking order of sorts. The oldest child makes the rules, the middle child breaks the rules, and the youngest, <laughs> well, the youngest feels the rules don't even apply to them. <laughs> Sound familiar? Well, it's the same pecking order with our pets. Chin Chin dug holes where he wanted, when he wanted. You either got out of the way or you got dirty. Okay. I know you are new around here, but here's how it works, kitty. I was here first. I am older than you. I am bigger than you, and this is my bed. You can sleep anywhere else in the house, just not here. Now, don't let me catch you on my bed again. Nope. Big kitty eats first. Yes, puppies are cute. <laughs> They can also be annoying. <laughs> He's practically still a hatchling, but that doesn't stop him from challenging Big Brother. I think someone's been watching too much Ninja Turtles. Sometimes a young kitty attempts to subvert the power paradigm. And then the alpha cat is forced to prove a point. and the hierarchy remains intact. <laughs> and now it's time for the Animal News Network. It's what all the dogs will be talking about around the fire hydrant tomorrow. I'm Alfonso Ribeiro, and here now, the Animal News. A town in New Zealand has earned the distinction of having the sleepiest drivers in the world. A recent study has revealed that nearly 87% of drivers and passengers have reported overpowering fatigue while traveling on State Highway 2. And the reason is simple. <laughs> Sheep. Watch this. I'm so excited. Sheep running, coming down the mountain. Lots and lots of sheep. Look how far they go all the way down the road. And they just keep on coming. It is quite the spectacle. Officer Packy McCrimmon of the New Zealand Highway Patrol warns, yeah, there are a lot of sheep on the highway, and when people drive through, they become curious as to how many, so they start counting. That's when the trouble starts. <laughs> Officer McCrimmon acknowledged that travelers want to be able to tell people just how many sheep they encountered on their trip, but encourages drivers to accept saying, a lot, a whole bunch, or more than you can shake a stick at. Here at ANN, we recommend that instead of counting the sheep and risking falling asleep while driving, try naming them instead. That will keep you alert and attentive until you run out of names. <laughs> this is a lot of sheep. There is finally a solution for dogs who want to be pet while their owner is at work. Feast your eyes on the automatic dog petter. Thanks to this ingenious device, your dog will no longer have to feel unappreciated while you are away at work or school. Just set the patent-pending automatic dog petter to one of its three settings, comforting, soothing, or good dog. While still in the testing phase, the creator assures us that once it is mass-marketed, it will come in different sizes, so little dogs don't feel left out. Famed recluse tortoise Jimmy the T was spotted out and about this week, and luckily an ANN cameraman was there to capture the scene. As you may remember, Jimmy the T rose to fame decades ago starring in such nature documentaries as My Tortoise Myself, Big Shell Big Attitude, and Going at My Own Pace. Tired of the celebrity life, Jimmy simply disappeared. And while he looks great, he still just wants to be left alone. The Republic of India Moped Association is reminding tourists that when traversing through their beautiful country on moped, that it is a good idea to go ahead and secure the optional moped insurance. Tourists are also reminded to never park their moped by the side of the road because, frankly, 
The elephants don't like it. And now it's time for an Animal News Network fake fact. Despite popular belief, a camel's favorite day of the week is actually Thursday. Not true. I'm Alfonso Rivero, wishing you the happiest of animal news. And now, quite possibly the cutest thing you will see today. A two-month-old two-toed sloth is too, too cute. Possibly the cutest thing you will see today. I truly believe all animals are great, but then there are those who are not only great, but also left their mark on the world. We call those great animals in history. Space, the final frontier, where no man had gone before. Well, at least that was the case in January of 1961, three whole months before the Soviet Union would send the first human being to make the trip. NASA escalated the space race with their Project Mercury mission by sending a different species of astronaut into the unknown, a chimpanzee named Ham. Ham was selected out of 40 other eligible space chimps by proving to be physically fit and exceptionally intelligent. Ham had the right stuff. And after 18 months of extensive training, Ham was ready to make history. And on January 31st, 1961, at the Cape Canaveral, Florida launch pad, Ham became the first hominid in space. One small step for a chimp, one giant leap for chimp kind. And for the next 16 minutes, Ham successfully completed the task he had been trained for to prove that a human astronaut could do the same. And after the whirlwind trip and a safe landing, the USS Donna retrieved the primate pioneer's capsule from the Atlantic Ocean. And just like that, the world had changed. He was healthy, a little stressed out, and a national hero. Ham's adventure in space only lasted 16 minutes and 39 seconds. But the things he achieved in that short time proved that safe space travel for humans was possible, forever changing the world for the better. And that's why Ham, the Astro Chimp, is a great animal in history. When given the choice, I will always take the stairs over the elevator because it's good exercise. I mean, think about it. Have you ever seen a fat slinky? I'm just saying. isn't about being fearless. It's about knowing what to be afraid of. So what do you say we play a round of know your animal phobia? Today's fear is gullyophobia. But is gullyophobia the irrational fear of A, seals, B, snails, C, sharks, or D, starfish? Think you know the answer? Well, I'll tell you when AFV Animal Edition continues. <laughs> Galeophobia is the irrational fear of sharks. Not your everyday common sense, you'd be crazy if you weren't scared of sharks fear. I'm talking irrational fear. Shark! Get it, get it, Come on, come on. 
So, if you have one of these phobics over to the house, the last thing you want to do is turn on that Jaws marathon. And even if no one is afraid of sharks, you probably don't want to watch Jaws 4 The Revenge. It just isn't very good. And now you know. I have read several articles where music critics tend to agree that the Beach Boys' Pet Sounds is the greatest album of all time. So I bought it. Not exactly what I was expecting from an album called Pet Sounds. I mean, there was no barking or meowing or neighing. <laughs> I was sort of bummed out. I mean, wouldn't it be nice as a good song, though? But <laughs> for me, it's Thriller. It's Thriller, baby. When he was in key, his beautiful bark could make the angels weep. <laughs> And when he was off key, <laughs> the angels wept for an entirely different reason. <laughs> One thing's for sure. <laughs> that baby can sleep through anything. Shotzi writes both the lyrics and the music. And with no formal training. They just seem to find everything funny. Eku, can you sing? Ooh, he was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> Perfection. Let's continue our countdown to the top 10 times you were glad that security camera was there. Number five. The bunny didn't realize it was Oscar and Millie's backyard playtime. No, you too, you too. Hey, hey. It's hard to know if Bunny is toying with them or actually nervous. No, Oscar! I think toying. I mean, the bunny could always get out the way it got in, right? Oh, oh. But the lady of the house is not taking any chances. She's glad she has a security camera because no one would believe her otherwise. Number four. They knew the wind couldn't be responsible for all those broken branches. Bear dancing with the tree every night makes so much sense now. Number three. When they hired Ted to dog sit, they hooked up their old nanny cam for peace of mind. Ted's online reviews claimed he went above and beyond, but they never expected this. Can't forget Binky. Best dog sitter ever. Number two, it's Groundhog Day. How's it work again? I always get it mixed up. So if he sees his shadow, it means the sun is out and it is the perfect time for a Groundhog Day barbecue, right? That must be it. Because the sun is out and he wants that barbecue. That's right. And if the lid falls on him, there will be six more weeks of winter. At least I think that's how it goes. We'll continue our countdown with number one a little later in the show. Ever think you know someone and totally get it wrong? We've all done it. Like the other day, a woman came up to me and she says she knows me. But then after a while, I realized she has me totally confused with someone else. Now, I hated to disappoint her, but finally, I just had to stop her and say, ma'am, I'm not Urkel. <laughs> it happens to animals, too. You guys, it's a shark, I swear to God. A shark? This is terrifying. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a dolphin. Oh, my God. I 
bet the dolphin was flattered, though. Always good to be thought of as a shark. <laughs> At least she didn't mistake the dolphin for Urkel. Hi, dolphin. Whether you want to call them classic or vintage, we have them in the AFV Animal Edition Archive. He was a firm believer that if you just ignored them, they would go away. And oh, how he hoped that was true. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of dogs? The shadow knows. <laughs> Ice cream man, ice cream man, ice cream man. He has a stale bread sundae that is amazing. He had never tried it while standing on the horse before. And it may be a while before he tries it again. <laughs> the blue whale has the largest heart of any animal on the planet. But do you know how many beats per minute that gigantic heart is capable of? Do you think it is a lot or a little? Well, I will tell you when AFV Animal Edition continues. <laughs> Fun fact, when a blue whale dives to gather food, its heart rate drops to as low as two beats per minute. I'd be terrified if it had stopped entirely. And when back toward the surface, the blue whale's heart rate maintains between 25 and 37 beats a minute. What do you think this guy's heart rate is right now? What do you say we see who's been writing us in the AFE Animal Inbox? Our first email comes from Sonia from Hannibal, Missouri. Hi, Alfonso. Why do dogs hop so much? Oh, Sonia. Dogs hop for lots of reasons. First of all, there is the sheer joy of hopping. Seriously, try it. It's fun. <laughs> but dogs also hop because of a hunting instinct, and sometimes it's just so they can see. Sure, he's having the time of his life, but he's also trying to see. That barley is high. Hi there. Hello. Our next email comes from Carla in Davenport, Iowa. Dear Alfonso, two questions. Are koala bears real bears? And also, do they go on vacation? <laughs> well, Carla, no. Koalas are marsupials, not bears. In fact, koala bear is sort of a nickname. They are simply koalas. And do they go on vacation? Huh, of course they do. <laughs> and they like to go fishing. Well, at least this one does. Catch anything today, mate? Now, I know what you're thinking. Koalas don't eat fish, they're herbivores. True, true. But I never said they were any good at fishing. And even if they did catch something, they would just release it. Going fishing isn't all about catching fish. It's the process. Just another day in Australia. Let's do another. Dear Alfonso, every time my son goes to get the mail, he is attacked by birds. Any advice, Steve? Thanks, Steve. That's a problem that is not as uncommon as you might think. Most people use a tennis racket. One eye on the bird, one eye on the mailbox, racket in hand. And dad safely on the porch walking you through it. One more step, one more step. Abort, abort. It was probably just bills and junk mail anyway. We love hearing from you, so keep those emails coming, and I will answer as many as I can. Remember when you first tried to ride a bike, and you were all, like, wibbly and wobbly and falling all over the place? But if you were like me, you eventually got the hang of it in your late 30s. <laughs> well, animals face a learning curve, too, and that's good news, because it's a lot of fun watching them figure things out. What you doing, puppy? Huh? What you doing, puppy? Well, the front half of him is going through the doggy door. What's wrong? But I don't know what the back half is up to. <laughs> Did you get stuck? That's one way to put it. <laughs> How are you gonna get out of there? There you go. That's it, little guy. Show that big bad foot who's the boss around here. Good, now walk away nice and cool. <laughs> oh, dear. 
Yeah, it's cute watching him try to take a bath in the toilet. But you don't want to see what he does in the tub. <laughs> Would you look at this little guy toddling around the house? It just couldn't get any cuter. I stand corrected. He got the concept of taking the recycling out to the curb. It was getting the plastic jug through the doggy door he was struggling with. Looks like that jug is just gonna have to stay in the house a little while longer. He's working on being scary, intimidating, aggressive. But for now, he'll have to settle for confusing. Good rule of thumb. When you're learning a new skill, for instance, walking downstairs, try not to overthink it. <laughs> if you think Nugget isn't gonna bring his toy shark to the puppy party, <laughs> think again. This Labrador Retriever's strength and speed are matched only by her grace. Well, she still got strength and speed. If you want to get something done, ask the busiest person you know, like a parent, the ultimate multitaskers. Parents get up first, go to bed last, take care of the house, provide food and shelter, get the kids to school, soccer, basketball, and sleepovers. Whew, I get exhausted just thinking about it. I have four kids, so I know. Life can get pretty chaotic for all of us, even animals. Every parent can relate to this. You have the one you have to carry everywhere. The one that will follow you anywhere. Then you have the straggler. And then the one that is just oblivious and wants to play. He's having a good time. And when you go back to get the last one, along comes the one that follows you everywhere. They follow her back. <laughs> what do you bet dad's back at the cave still hibernating? Go, babies, go. Go, babies. No, not again. Oh, she got them all over us, finally. And Mama Bear will do the same thing tomorrow. Being a parent is tough. Hope you've been paying attention, because we are going to present $1,000 to the video we enjoyed the most. Think we will pick the same one as you? We will also conclude our top 10 countdown, show you our viral clip of the week, and a whole lot more when AFE Animal Edition continues. <laughs> Ed's dad felt this was the best way to make sure little Ed never suffered from the irrational fear of sharks. Galeophobia, remember? Just hope it doesn't backfire and little Ed comes down with a case of globophobia. <laughs> globophobia is the irrational fear of balloons. When a video takes on a life of its own and everyone starts sharing it, it qualifies as our viral clip of the week. Jimmy, we need a price check on a 10-foot diamond python on aisle 7. That's a price check on a 10-foot diamond python. Thank you, Jimmy. They will tell you that when you fall off a horse, you gotta get right back on. It's good advice, but when you find yourself getting back on for like the thousandth time, maybe the horse is trying to tell you something. <laughs> Frisco had this quirky thing he liked to do. Whenever he felt a rider wasn't doing it right, he'd sail them into the wall. 
You can sort of tell by how he's dressed. He's never done this before. <laughs> Esther, would you like a treat? He was the most positive horse in the barn. Oh, you want some treat? Yeah. Ooh. Tinkerbell always started off strong. But by jump number two, she would lose all interest. Oh, oh. Zena had a less than subtle way of requesting more personal space. <laughs> it was effective, however. <laughs> These two pony pals are always helping each other out. But as they're getting bigger, they're getting stronger. First, first, first. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> he had all the room in the world. And it still wasn't enough for him. <laughs> Carrots are one of Pony's favorite treats. And little girls like them too. We have been counting down the top 10 times you were glad that security camera was there. But before we reveal number one, let's take another look at the first nine. Number 10, Boundless Energy. Number nine, The Garbage Can Hound. Number eight. Oh my God. Sneak alert, sneak alert. Number seven, A Swim Under the Stars. Number six, Way to Go Haley. Number five, The Chase Is On. Number four, oh yeah. That's the spot. Number three, best dog sitter ever. Number two, the groundhog barbecue. And now on our countdown of the top 10 times you were glad that security camera was there, we proudly present number one. Woo boy, that's a lot of coffee there. And it's the good stuff too. So she will just put this large amount of money on the scale. It will be safe there. But before the transaction can be completed, an over-caffeinated bird comes in and then takes off. He's off to buy some bird seed. And that is number one. We saw an amazing array of videos tonight, and I wish I could give all of them the dough, but the video we enjoyed the most, and the recipient of the $1,000 is the Snow Tunnelers from Holly Rimby of Candor, New York. Maybe Holly can use the money to buy a really, really good snow shovel. Oh! Holly! I kid you not when I say this is the fastest hour of my week. Time really does fly when you're having fun. But in addition to having fun, I think we may have also learned a thing or two along the way. We learned that the call of the wild is not always pretty. We learned that you should always wait your turn and always give the goat the right of way. We learned the mascot for the Amarillo Sod Poodles is named Ruckus that petting your dog by hand may soon become obsolete. One of the greatest astronauts in history was a chimpanzee named Ham, and that seagulls make the absolute best comedy audiences. But most of all, we learned just how much fun it is to live life, love animals, and laugh all the while you are doing both. Let's do this again very soon. Good night, everybody.